Well, hello everybody, and welcome to the Vintage Electronics channel. Today we're going to take a look at the device that captured the lives of so many of us who were kids in the 80s and 90s, the VHS camcorder. We'll talk about VHS's role in home movies, what made it so revolutionary, and we'll even do a live video test to compare it to modern video. Stay tuned. <music> As a home video recording standard, VHS was introduced by JVC back in 1976. It quickly became the most dominant format in the market. If you haven't watched my video about VHS, check that out too since we're not going to be covering a lot of the details of VHS itself in this video. I'll put a link overhead and in the description below. In this video, we're going to take a look at VHS from the standpoint of home video recording. As a medium for recording home movies, VHS was revolutionary. Before videotape, home movie enthusiasts had to rely on 16mm or 8mm film. Much of my younger years were actually captured on Super 8 film just like this. Most of them without sound, and each reel was only a couple of minutes long. So you can understand why VHS shook this market up. Not only could you record sound and video, each tape recorded about two hours of footage at the fastest speed. For the first time, American families were able to capture every milestone in life. Birthdays, weddings, parties, vacations, nothing was too small to be captured on tape. And best of all, you could watch the movies instantly. You didn't have to send film off for processing, wait a week or two, and then drag out the projection screen and all of the equipment that was necessary to watch what you just captured. VHS home movies could be watched whenever you wanted. Now let's take a look at a typical 1990s VHS home movie camera. So what makes this camcorder so revolutionary? Well, like I said, it's not the camcorder itself, not this particular one. It's what these things could do when they first got introduced in the late 70s or early 1980s. A camcorder was an all-in-one unit. You didn't have a separate VCR and a separate camera. The thing that really made this revolutionary was this thing right here. Yep, that's just a viewfinder. That's just where you see what you're recording. But the revolutionary thing with this was being able to watch what you just recorded back through that eyepiece. There's a teeny tiny little CRT monitor in there so you could actually watch your video straight away. That's something you couldn't do before. Now, being a later model from the 90s, this one actually also has a built-in LCD screen, too, which was something you didn't see a whole lot on a VHS camcorder. Now, as far as the basics go on the controls, we do have the normal transport controls up top. Your rewind, play, stop, fast forward, that type of thing. This one does have an AV dub button, so you could replace either the video or the audio on your tape. If you wanted to add background music or if you wanted to reshoot uh, some video on there, you could. You've got your on-off switch, which selects either VCR if you're going to use it just to watch videos or camera if you're going to be recording them. It's got a built-in tiler to put titles across the bottom of your video, the date and time stamp, a reset for the counter, and then the on-screen display, which showed up in the viewfinder, but also on that screen down below. Now, it also has a couple of digital effects. You do have a fade control that'll fade your uh, scenes out and in, uh, an instant zoom, which zooms in digitally real quick, basic digital effects, a digital image stabilizer, uh, then your controls for the video light. Now this one does on the front have a built-in video light, which is something you didn't see very often on these, but came in handy because these CCDs were not the best at low light recording, so this helped out quite a bit. So we've got the lens down here, got the microphone for sound, your zoom control is right there. Now here on the other side, this is all your tape control or your tape transport mechanism here. So, you know, not the smallest thing in the world, but still small for 80s and 90s standards. And then a great big NICAD battery on the back. And even though this battery is huge, I don't remember being able to get a full two-hour tape's worth of recording out of one of these. I could be wrong. But let's get a tape put in this thing. Let's fire it up. Uh, we'll take a look at how it works and record a little bit of video and uh, do a little demo on the quality and the use of this thing. All right, so we've got our NICAD battery all charged up. Got a T120 tape inside. We've got everything turned on and ready to record 
So, just to give us something to focus on here briefly, I put our Super 8 movie film there, and it is showing up in the viewfinder and on our little LCD display down here. Uh, they both show the same thing. They've got the counter number, the amount of tape you got left, battery level, auto exposure. It's on pause right now. So if we record over here on the side, now it changes to record and lets us know that we're recording something. Let's set it up on the tripod and do a kind of a real world test here. So here's a real world test of the VHS camera. Definitely not HD by, by any standards. You're looking at about 240 lines of resolution. Standard definition was about 525. DVDs were about 480. So this was about half of a DVD quality even. So what happened to VHS in a home movie setting? Well, smaller and smaller formats, like Sony's 8mm video format and digital, took over. Speaking of digital, let's go back. So by the late 1990s and early 2000s, VHS had really started to fall out of fashion with the average home movie recorder. The smaller formats that we just talked about, as well as some newcomers in the digital age, like Mini DV and some DVD home recording camcorders, were quickly taking over that market. So VHS just slowly faded into non-existence by the year 2010-2015, even blank tapes weren't being made anymore. So it really is a relic of the past, but a lot of our lives are recorded on it. So if you do have those memories, make sure you're getting those transferred over to digital as soon as you can because tape doesn't last forever. I hope you've enjoyed this brief little overview of VHS as a home movie format. If you did, please hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. We'll have more content coming out all the time. And I've been Chad. This has been the Vintage Electronics Channel. We appreciate you watching. See you next time.